Thank God he put us in a covenant with himself. And a covenant is very important to where we are and where we are going. Because all of the covenantal relationships that God have with his people, those are the people that he's coming back to get, to carry to his heaven, his home. So we want to begin reading at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we love you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, there is no God like our God. And I praise you because you chose us, not that we chose you. And then you put us in a covenant with you. Now, Father, give us an understanding of what this covenant is all about. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So first of all, we want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We pretty much read this every first Sunday. And some that take the Lord's table every Sunday. This is about a covenant. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and beginning at verse 23, Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me this is the covenant now this new covenant was implemented during the last Passover that Jesus Christ partook. Him and the 11 disciples, and because Judas uh, tipped out right about then when he was moving from the uh, Passover into the Lord's Supper. So he interrupted the Passover brought it to an end but from that point on we don't celebrate the Passover we celebrate the new covenant which is in his blood and this new covenant uh, was because the old covenant was no longer useful to God so look at uh, Romans I mean sorry if he Hebrews chapter 8. And let's see about this covenant uh, before we get into the benefits of it. Verse 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, there would have been no occasion sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, days are coming, said the Lord, when I will effect a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and I did not care for them, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds and I will write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now let's talk about that. The old covenant has become obsolete and this old covenant is the one that was made at Mount Sinai when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments these uh, there was a covenant formed with the Israelites and this covenant had everything in it that would cause them to survive 
And first of all, let me just give you the first four. The first four was, have no other God before me. Make no graven images. Do not take my name in vain, nor break the Sabbath. So what did he say? He said, be loyal to me, faithful to me, reverence in me, and intimate with me. Don't break the Sabbath. God set aside that day so that you can spend with him. Don't break the Sabbath. So, needless to say, that during the history of Israel, they broke those laws. Um, I don't know one that they didn't break, but they couldn't keep them. See, that's the point. That's the beauty of this. No matter how they tried, they couldn't keep them. So here is Hebrews explaining to us, making the transition from the old covenant that he made with them at Mount Sinai and now the new covenant that he made when he was here on earth in his first coming. By the way, it's going to be a second coming. But in his first coming, then uh, he made a switch. He went from the Passover into the Lord's Supper. And now it's a celebration we have with God every time we take the Lord's Supper. As often as you do this in remembrance of me, uh, uh, as often as you take this, do it in remembrance of me. And that's the sacrifice he made for us. Now this is so important. And that let me finish reading at verse number 11 of Hebrews 8. He says, And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all will know me, from the least to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Then he said, a new covenant he has made the first obsolete. But whatever is becoming obsolete has grown old and is ready to disappear. And it did. Now we're in the new covenant. You say, but it, it sounds like it was with Israel with Judah yeah it was but it left room for us to get into that covenant now whether you are Jew or Gentile or somewhere in between everybody must get into this new covenant and this new covenant is based on the blood shedded by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and upon us receiving him we are given forgiveness and somewhere in Hebrews it says without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins the key to it all was that our sins would be forgiven. And when John the Baptist in the Jordan baptized, he looked and he saw Jesus walking by. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. Wow, that take away sins. This Christ did it. So now, let me quickly, because I'm jump through some hoops here. And let me come to the point of um, when he says that he he's forgiven us of all of our sins and making a new covenant. The, the way we get into the covenant is through the gospel. The gospel was all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
So when Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of salvation. Everyone who believed to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. For in it is the righteousness of God. So we become right with God, sins forgiven, the moment we believe and accept the gospel. See, we, we, we are Abraham's kids by faith. And so we have the faith to believe and to confess with our mouth that Jesus Lord to the glory of the Father and believe that God raised him from the dead he said you shall be saved and so this covenant it ain't some things it's everything this new covenant of God is everything and has everything in it and I'm going to come and next week talk about how we got in this covenant, really got into it, because it has to be something that's supernatural that God has to do, and because you can't do it for yourself. And I think he made it clear to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Uh, because you, no matter how much work you do, it will not give you salvation. You can't work for your salvation. It's a grace act of God. Well, so we have uh, we have the new covenant, and we're in the new covenant. And with the new covenant comes the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit does a work in our life that qualifies us and causes us to become one with God. Wow. So let's pray. Father, I want to thank you because you have put us in Christ. You made us one with you. It was the work of the Holy Spirit that baptized us into the body of Christ. And we thank you and we love you. Now, Father, bless your people to understand this truth of your new covenant. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.